We'll see if those guys can make stuff work. And uh, I'm casting from the stream right now. Nature, you are actually in the lobby, I believe. How far along are we with the bands and picks, and what are they? Um, we have just started banding, and the Annie is going to be the very first band coming out from ONS. So that is, uh, well, fairly standard, I think. Yeah, nothing too surprising. Annie is a really, really strong support. Scales well, has incredibly strong early presence thanks to her very high damage and at, on the current patch, the 1.75 second stun, which she can charge up and is AoE. So really, really, really strong support at the moment. But at the moment, it does seem like we may have some extra bands coming out, or at least we must have done by now, Nature. So what would that be? Yeah, so STO banning out the Shivana, and besides that, not a whole lot of bans just yet, as Rallis is still looking to ban for his team, and it is in fact going to be the Vayne, which just surprises me a little, but I, I could understand why you would be afraid of a Vayne. Yeah, you get those individual players who are so good on Vayne, and when that happens, it's really, really scary to deal with, just because Vayne can carry a game on her own, or almost, just by being vain. She just does so much damage, is so hard to pin down, and can really, really turn things around. And normally what you want to do is to kind of make her life difficult early on. Uh, you know, obviously she has some difficult lane matchups against stuff like Caitlyn against Lucian, but uh, that uh, if you have a particularly good vein that can work around that issue and come out of the lane on an equal footing, then you just got a super, super strong carry there. Uh, she does still actually even after the lane have a couple of small weaknesses in that she isn't very very safe against super reliable engages for instance she's only got that stealth and 550 range auto so she can't contribute like uh, a caster kind of ad carry like a like a lucian or anything like that but um certainly vain the uh, scary scary stuff and not one you have to deal with now because it's been burned out all right, so some uh, couple of interesting bands coming out here. And Dr. Mundo, not so interesting. But Cassadin and Rengar have actually been banned. Now, Rengar is a, well, a fairly, fairly standard ban, but not so much as the Dr. Mundo, of course. And the Cassadin is uh, what surprises me a little bit in this uh, lineup. But I believe we have seen that one before against SDO. Well, Cassadin is still a very, very respected pick in the current patch. He, he, he's really, really strong at the moment and basically will remain incredibly strong so long as he can do moderate damage while retaining the mobility that Riftwalk gives him because mobility in League of Legends is just the best thing to have because being in the right place at the right time is pretty much the key part of the game. Obviously the Rengar ban there means that there's not going to be a Mima Rengar which is uh, perhaps a little bit sad but not too bad of a big bad of a deal and it certainly means that he's drawn that ban. It does seem like they are going to pick out Lucian as their first pick. Yeah, it uh, certainly is the case right there. Mr. Alice will be running that Lucian in the bottom lane. On the other side, however, Estio looking to pick up the uh, Elise as Yuki hasn't quite decided what he wants to run just yet. So we are, we are going to have to wait that one out. But then again, of course, the Elise is a very, very powerful uh, jungler, especially in uh, the early game, with one cocoon you can just immediately immediately blow someone to hell, if you will. And Yuki will be running, uh, it seems, or he will be picking the Renekton for his team. Fairly standard stuff. Again, Elise, very, very respected jungler. Perhaps a little bit less than she used to be. I think she, maybe the pick rate is falling off a little bit, but mm -hmm. still very, very capable of snowballing a game and counter jungling, especially uh, just due to her sheer amount of burst that you mentioned before. As a duelist, she becomes very, very difficult to deal with, and she snowballs very, very hard as well because she can build that magic penetration build almost like a secondary AP carry. There's also a uh, it's kind of secondary note though about Elise in that um, she, if she uh, if you pick her out you don't necessarily need to worry about running an all AD, ca uh, AD team. For instance if you were to run an AD mid lane now having already connected Renekton in the top lane there would still be significant enough magic damage threats that they wouldn't necessarily be able to just build sheer armor on the opposing team. But regardless though we should have another couple of picks by this point I would have hoped and what would they be? So Amen will be locking in the Vi for his team, so fairly standard uh, 
pick rather right there as well and white knight will be locking in the zyra now i believe he will switch that one out to mixture in the end but we might just see a zyra mid lane because of course uh white knight is their mid laner i doubt it to be honest but well everything anything can happen of course here yeah flexible pick zyra is and that just generally means it's a little bit more difficult to play around it I don't know, as you say, whether White Knight does play Zyra. I believe he's actually a sub for this team, even though he is number one on the solo queue challenger ladder. I, I, uh, don't quote me on that, because I have yeah, not checked my facts. That is true. Okay, right. But uh, it's always a little bit difficult to know for, for a certainty on that front. Um, so... Zyra, Zyra mid lane would actually work pretty decently against against the Morgana mid lane. That is actually a possible but a possibility, but it doesn't really matter. It seems like uh, we do have the next couple of lock-ins. Yeah, so Arax will be locking in the Morgana, as you said, for his team, and uh, Zilx will be locking in the Caitlyn. Once again, fairly standard stuff right there. Uh, Morgana, we just tend to see that from time to time to uh, deal with certain champions. As on the other side, Mimer will be uh, looking to pick up the Vladimir, which uh, we do not see a whole lot of. Uh, well, we tend to see it just sometimes, but in this latest patch, I, uh, I don't think I've actually seen it a whole lot. Okay, so there's actually a couple of interesting things now. Firstly, Vladimir versus Renekton is a very winnable lane for Vladimir. You have to be very, very skilled, you have to be good on the uh, pool, because if you pull the stun from Renekton at the right timing, he actually wastes the stun, doesn't do any damage, doesn't get the stun, but you do pool and you do get out, so that uh, can actually work in your favor. And obviously the ranged harass and sustain will eventually scale up to a point Renekton can't deal with it, and Vlad, later on into the game, becomes a very, very high threat. If you end up dealing with that uh, like massive AoE storm that you can potentially get from him, then uh, you don't want to take more than a couple of rotations. Let's just say that. But the problem with Vlad late game is you can't really focus him out because he gets the Zonyas and then he gets the pool. And then you actually can get the pool into the Zonyas and then into the second pool if you survive long enough. So uh, Vlad late game, really, really difficult to deal with. Zed, interesting pickup as well. But the other one I want to talk about now is that it could actually be a Morgana support because if it's Zyra support, everything that she does is magic damage, which makes the Black Shield a very, very valuable thing to have. And it seems like they have actually given the Morgana over to Kuja. So that means that it will, in fact, be the Morgana support, as you said, as Zilx will be running the kill in the middle lane. So uh, fairly standard, uh, fairly interesting stuff right there. And um, uh, I, the Kale is, of course, a, uh, a comfort pick against the Zed because you can uh, negate so much damage with uh, the intervention. Yeah, Zed can't really all in against Kale unless intervention is down. And in addition, Kale can really absolutely brutalize him during the lane phase. Because Zed goes in for some uh, some lovely creep farm and receives a reckoning and a few auto attacks to go with it. So really, really nasty stuff there. And does he he basically cannot trade with Zed uh, with Kale? Sorry. So regardless, though, guys, we are going to be going into a quick commercial break now. Um, I think it should be less than three minutes at this point because we have actually gone a little bit through the delay timer for a for a change. And uh, guys, we will be right back. So stick around.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the EUS Challenger Series 16 Grand Final. We actually have the WePlay Invitational Final coming up later after this. So once this best of five is done, there will be more content. But this is the Grand Final for the EUS Challenger Series 16. This is Salad Tomate Oinion, STO, <laughs> versus ONS, Oinkers Never Sleep. I am Spoddington, joined once again by nature. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it seems that we might have some action going on in these early minutes of the games as we do have uh, of course both teams here grouping up looking to either award or either actually steal some buffs now this is a um, I don't think either team has seen each other just yet as uh, we do have of course STO looking to uh, well, put some wards in that red buff area and on the other side ONS who haven't seen STO looking to uh, maybe counter a, a, a invade that might have happened or they're looking for a late invade on that blue buff one of those interesting metagame thing is that because we're not seeing as much first blood fishing coming out in that brush that you can actually see uh, on the back of the red side uh, back sorry on the back of the red buff um, kind of pit because we, for a while we were seeing a lot of teams stack five men in there and hope for an invade to come in from that angle. But because that's not being done as much now, it actually makes it a much more viable thing to do it. Because now the teams are actually starting to invade through that route again. Which it's all one of those kind of um, weird things, but uh, should actually be something we see teams start to adapt to as time goes by. Regardless though. All the guys are getting into their lanes, and it does seem like we're going to be seeing the straight two-on-twos, the straight one-on-ones, and uh, I think that will probably, in the long run, uh, favor Oinkers Never Sleep. Just for now, in these small skirmishes, however, that might just favor um, uh, uh, STO, sorry about that, because, of course, the Black Shield will negate a whole lot of damage that Miksha is uh, going to put out. And uh, oh, that is never nice. Now, in that middle lane, I feel like the uh, White Knight is going to have to put some real, real pressure on the kill if he actually wants to make something happen. Uh, but then again, his real power spike hits when he gets level 6, so that might just be hard for him. Yeah, Zed is a very late game oriented, orientated champion, but 
uh, it's going to be a long time before he can actually burst down Kale at all. And even when he can, he's still going to have to contend with intervention. It's a very, very difficult time. However, I did just want to note one thing about the bottom lane, which is why I said it would probably go Oinkers Never Sleeps way. The Black Shield is a very long cooldown. 20 seconds. So while at level 6, that's, that's going to be very important. Is there a... Uh... Sorry, we... No, was sorry, I, that, I was just uh, saying that's true. Okay, right. No worries. <laughs> uh, well... So, uh, at level 6, that's going to be very, very important. The Black Shield will make the all-in potential very, very weak comparatively to usual from Zyra Lucian. But at this stage, not so useful. Gank in top. Don't know if they're going to get this. Mimer might be in trouble. Cocoon doesn't quite connect. Great flash out of Mimer right there, as he will be surviving that one. Meanwhile, that bottom lane, we did have Yuki dropping quite low. He will be being forced to back away. And uh, well, that is the end of that. But that might just open up that bottom lane for Rallas and make sure to put, to put some damage down on the turret. Yeah, and you can see how well they have been abusing the long cooldown of the Black Shield. Mixer, very, very willing to take the trade of throwing out plants. But my mirror top lane is being dived again. Yeah, but here's Amin to reinforce him. Doesn't quite connect the Vault Breaker. He might be looking for more, but Airwax is a little bit too slippery for that with the Repel, of course. So he will be getting out safely. But Mimer isn't done being ganked quite yet. Gets stunned up once again. Here comes Airwax being forced to pop the ghost. Here's Amin once again. Airwax taking a whole lot of damage. Mimer just barely surviving. Amin will pick up the kill on towards Airwax. Not quite done. On towards Gob here yet. He will have the Vault Breaker up in three more seconds, but he decides against pursuing. And that is first blood going over to ONS. And another thing to note right now, White Knight in the mid lane nearly brought down Kale. You can see he's very, very low. Both ignites there, I think. No, actually Kale still retains hers, but Zed is actually gonna go in again! He used the flash, but then again he didn't really have enough enough damage rather to actually pick up the kill on towards Zilk, so. Zilx will just be trying to heal himself up. His mana is getting quite low, so he might just want to uh, start uh, thinking about conserving that as much as possible. But just for now, he will be taking uh, down as much minions as he can and backing away. He is sitting on uh, around 900 gold, so he will probably be picking himself up something nice. But in the meantime, White Knight is left to uh, farm for his own. And really nice play by White Knight to get Kale that low, but that last engage where he always went under the tower and blew his flash to try and get Kale in was closer than it looked. It was barely, just very slightly out of range using his auto attack. And remember Zed's passive, Contempt for the Weak, does actually give him a very nice spike of damage when someone is below half health. So he was very, very close to getting that auto attack off, and it probably would have been enough to go for the kill, unfortunately. For White Knight, that is. It didn't work out. So he is now going to be in lane without Flash and without Ignite. Kale still having hers and not having been forced out of XP range. So they are going to hit that level 6 on roughly equal terms. Kale might be able to abuse that and go really, really aggressive. White Knight has a hit level 6 already, but he doesn't do quite enough damage to actually take Zilks down within a couple of seconds. Now hold that thought for a second because we might have a gank happening in that bottom lane. Airwax has been spotted by the ward, so that will not be happening just yet. Amin goes in on towards Airwax, doesn't quite connect the Vault Breaker. Airwax now running for his life as Miksha is coming in all, uh, as well as the repel has been used. Airwax comes down, great black shield, will shield him from the grasping roots. That seems to be the end of that, but uh, both teams just still looking to uh, maybe make something happen as they do in the end back away. And uh, well, there's a bit of damage coming down on Airwax, but no real kills just yet. Yeah, both the mid laners actually uh, getting into that trade situation there. Kind of both of them were trying to move down to support the fight, but neither was actually able to get there in time. And obviously the fight does put Mr. Rallas Mixer probably a little bit ahead again because they are once again kind of pushing their opponents back on their tower, forcing them to use the pots and securing a little bit of a CS advantage for Lucian here who has got about 10 over his lane opponent. So not huge, but you can see how much kill threat he's actually starting to get. Once he's hit six, Yuki is going to have to be very, very careful. Yeah, I feel like uh, that bottom lane really needs a little bit of help. Mixer taking a whole lot of damage because of the combo of Kuja and Yuki. But Flash coming out of Mixer and that will be enough to actually pick up the kill for Valas. Now turn, trying to turn it around on towards Yuki. Not quite enough to actually take him down as Yuki put down a good, a good Pilt or a Peacemaker. And that will force Valas away for himself. Yuki not done defending this turret just yet. He will not be going down here 
without a fight, but Rallis and Miksha might just be a little bit too much to deal with. Yeah, right now Yuki's plan is just to sit in the lane and get that little bit of farm that is still available and then go back, try and heal up. But they're starting to really lose their grip, honestly, at this point. The whole of STO is significantly behind at this point. Renekton is the only one who's ahead on CS and he's not significantly ahead. And Vlad will outscale him and outscale him pretty surprisingly hard. But that is a late game monster, Renekton. Very, very tanky late game, but not a lot else going for him. So it's actually looking quite bad for them. Kale doing okay in the mid lane, but really not as well as you would expect, given that that is generally considered a counter lane, and he's actually now behind by 10 CS. Bottom lane, Caitlyn, well, late game, maybe she will have an edge over Lucian, but right now significantly far behind, and the item difference is only going to increase that gap. BF Sword versus a Pickaxe Map Scepter. Yeah, that is not going to be nice for Yuki at all. As right now, Irales and Mixa, of course, are still looking to uh, well, freeze this lane and pick up as much farm as possible while denying Yuki and Kuja as much farm as possible as well. Now, we do have uh, Zilks picking up some wraiths for himself to, of course, increase that farm that he has because I don't. I don't think he can actually trade with White Knight at this point because, uh, of course, White Knight deals a little bit too much damage and, um, well, Zilks doesn't have too much armor to actually deal with White Knight. Yeah, and actually, we're starting to see in this top lane, by the way, actually a fight in bottom. Yeah, Kuja explodes almost instantly. Right now, Arax in trouble as well. It's in all comes out. That really isn't enough to take down Miksha. Rallas using the culling to put down a whole lot of damage on towards Yuki. Is that going to be enough? Barrier being used. Yuki, very, very low. Here comes Amin Flash. And that will be enough to take down Yuki. I have to say right now, the dominance of the laning out of... Uh, out of... Ah, what was, what was the name? It was Oinkers Never Sleep, which is a very silly name. And that's why I've forgotten it, I'm sure. Um, Oinkers never sleep. They are really, really dominating just sheerly off of lane mechanics. It's not like Armin, although Armin is doing a fine job overall, it's not like he's really snowballing out of control and just ganking everywhere and setting up kills everywhere like we saw the other day when he was playing Lee Sin. He is getting in and getting stuff done, but he's not a super monster like he was before. A lot of this is just down to the individual skill because he's finding the opportunities where his lanes have already created them. And now Mimer actually needs to watch out for himself. He's got double escapes available though and pool. So Airwax isn't even going to try. Yeah, Ward uh, did spot Airwax out in time for Mimer to actually back off and well get to a safe distance. Amin will be finding here that the uh, dragon is gone. So very first dragon going over to Oinkers Never Sleep. And that will extend their gold lead to around 3,000 gold, of course, in these early levels. Um, well, the dragon isn't uh, worth as much as it was earlier. But it is always a nice extra to uh, maybe buy some more items. Uh, right now, Mixia facing off against Yuki and Kuja. Dark Shield being used on Yuki. So that is going to be down, or Black Shield rather, that is going to be down for another 15 seconds. And well, Amin once again rotating over to that towards that bottom lane. And that might just indicate that he is looking for a gank once again. Yeah, he can easily set it up too. They can chain it very, very effectively if a grasping roots lands. But even if it doesn't, Armin can cover so much distance so quickly with his Q and his ult and his flash. He can easily set up any lane gank at this point because they all are starting to get to that point where they have serious kill potential maybe not top so easily but gob is actually falling quite low on health for the continued harass out of mimer it's causing a lot of problems and mimer is not getting beaten down himself so armin has basically the world is his oyster he can go anywhere except bot because they just killed morgana and i didn't really notice but um he can pretty much just go anywhere and still be fairly confident of getting a kill because there's so much damage available in any of their lanes. And actually, you can see now blue ping on the mid lane. Kale may be the next target, but actually Armin's going around towards the blue and then maybe going for it. Yeah, in that bottom lane, we did see almost a double kill coming down there earlier for Rallens as he almost, but just not yet, finished uh, or managed to finish off Yuki because uh, the culling was proven to be a little bit too much for Yuki to handle as uh, Rallens uh, well, took him down to around 100 HP in the end and then Yuki was forced, um, I believe, to 
get out of there with a flash. And right now, Miksha and Yuki facing off against each other. Piltover Peacemaker coming out. That will not quite connect. Miksha really cannot go in towards that third range. And uh, Yuki is taking so, so much damage because of Miksha alone. Yeah, it's uh, it, they're getting into a situation where they're so far behind that they can't even hope to try and catch up just because that distance between the two players is now uh, pushing them out of lane so they can't even get an XP range and that in turn increases the increases the gap between them. So the longer this lane goes on at this point, the further ahead Lucian Zyra is going to get and doesn't look like they've got any rest by anywhere else. Renekton in the top lane has long since passed the point where he has any kind of kill potential on Mimer. He will be outscaled eventually. It's going to take a long, long time, but it will happen eventually. And Kale is not able to get that advantage over White Knight because he's just so individually skilled, it seems, that he's able to play this matchup in spite of it apparently being unfavorable and come out on top. I don't even really know how he's doing it, but he is doing it and he's forcing Kale to respect his prowess in the mid lane. Now, of course, White Knight is a, a very skilled individual player. That is probably the reason. Is uh, of course, number one on that uh, ranked list. And so right now, White Knight might be looking for a little bit of a pick here. He finds Kuja and Yuki uses a death mark towards Kuja. So much damage coming down on him. And the soul shackles, soul shackles rather, aren't even going to be enough to save him. Yeah, they're, they're already behind, they're already squishy, and Zed is doing very well for himself. Actually, Mixer may be looking for the catch on Yuki, but it's going to be spotted out. He's got the burst, though, at this health to take down Yuki, 100-0. That's really, really scary for Yuki, because now he can't even go near the creeps, and go near his tower, which is dropped. And now Arthur is looking to cement their advantage by getting a kill in the top lane. He swept out that wall, so he's got all the time in the world, and he's going to wait for Mima to set it up. Yeah, here comes Mimer. Good bait coming out of him. Great. As uh, Vault Breaker will knock back Gob. We did have the Hemo play coming out as well. Gob being forced to use the Dominus, but it really isn't going to be enough as Mimer will be picking up that kill. They are looking for as much damage as they can on that turret, and that turret is going down. Yeah, uh, it's a really, really awkward situation for them. And now I've got to say, actually. What do you do in this situation if you're STO? They haven't been this badly outmatched all tournament, and I've got to say it's really, really testament to how good their opponents actually are. It just, it's not, it's not even particularly, and I, and I don't want to say that like I'm dissing their ability to play as a team, but they haven't needed to really make huge, coordinated, skilled moves across the map. You know, it hasn't been lane rotations. They've just been straight up out two on twoing, out one on oneing their opponents. Armin has just been cementing that lead ahead. Now, White Knight is actually going to take a bit of a damage in the mid lane. That's kind of how we expected the lane to go, but he's just not been able to secure a CS lead with that small advantage he had in the matchup. And now they need to kind of slow the pace of this game down and wait for that double threat composition to really come into its own. Because late game, Kale and Caitlyn with a Morgana support for peeling, with a Renekton, with a potential intervention to keep him alive. They have a really strong late game team fight, but they're going to have to contend with how far ahead their opponents are. Mimer in the mid lane, though, could be in trouble. Cocoon will not quite connect, so Mimer is uh, all fine and good in that middle lane. But here comes Miksha, and here comes Amin that will knock back Airwax. He has used the repel, but is it going to be enough? It certainly seems not like it. Intervention comes out. That will be saving him just for now. So great intervention there. And uh, he will be living to see another day. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Gob actually getting forced out by Zed. He did use his death mark though, so he might choose to stay in and just try and hold off the push. Does have his Dominus available. He may even go in for it. Yeah, he uses the Dominus. Great stun on towards White Knight. He is taking a little bit too much damage for his liking. And as he said, he actually was forced to back away. But look at this. Once again, ONS looking to take down the dragon. Smart timing call. They know Renekton committed himself in the top lane, and they know they've managed to get a decent bit of poke down on their opponents in the mid lane. Plus, they know they don't want to abandon the tower because they don't have the vision control over that area. Plus, they know that they are so much stronger at this stage of the game thanks to how fed they are, and Zig's taking a huge amount of damage. Meanwhile, that middle lane, yeah, there you have it. Amin almost managing to finish off Zilks, which, well, wasn't 
really able to do it in the end, but Airwax was a little bit too much overextended, so he is going down as a result. That is going to be the middle tower for ONS, and they might just be looking for that second tier middle tower as a result, but Yuki and Kujan will be standing by to defend that one, so they are looking to, uh, well, maybe put some pressure on that bottom lane, but first, they are going to rotate over towards that blue buff, and they will be taking that one home. Yeah, they are now a long way ahead. I don't know if I've mentioned that, but a long, long way ahead at this stage of the game. 8k gold is something we don't typically see in Season 4. However, oh, they actually have Renekton dropping in the top lane there, so that's not ideal either uh, for them. Yeah, getting to a point of almost no return. However, they do have the capacity to stall decently well. They have some okay wave clear, and I have a phone ringing, so that's a little awkward. I have to go and shut. All right, so while Spuddington takes his phone call, I'm just going to take over just for now. Well, look at this. White Knight will be pushing down that top lane. Yuki is there to defend it. I really don't think he can actually do so, but... Arawax is here to maybe reinforce him. Uses the repel. Is that going to be enough? It certainly doesn't look like a great cocoon will come out of Arawax. White Knight now being forced to back away very, very quickly. Yuki uses the flash. White Knight being forced to flash for himself. But here is Amin. Ace in the hole comes out. Is that going to be enough? It doesn't look like it. But Arawax will be picking up the kill. Amin just a little bit too late. And that is well, the very first kill being picked up for Salad Tomat Oignon right there. And uh, I'm not sure whether... Uh, uh, Spuddington is back already, but Zilks will be falling in the bottom lane. I am, I am back. Sorry about that. Uh, I, unfortunately, due to home circumstances at the moment, I am currently resident in our kitchen, which is um, not really ideal, uh, I have to be honest. You may also be able to hear a very slight echo in my voice. That is, that is also due to it being the kitchen. So, uh, regardless though, I have gotten annoyed at people now and should hopefully not be interrupted by that... Uh, slightly cheap tone uh, from the uh, phone. Uh, I assume, however, ooh, there has actually been a kill, uh, but otherwise the game is kind of flowing the same way in that very brief time I was away. Yeah, they did manage indeed to pick up a kill one towards White Knight, so he is uh, going to be the ver first death for his team. Um, I don't think that really mattered too much for them because they are still cruising down that middle lane, still looking to take down that hurt. Mixchamp might be looking from the side to get a grasping roots out. Will not be landing that one as Arawax did use the repel to maybe look for a kill onto Rodrales. But Rodrales with the double buff will just blow someone up. Now, meanwhile, in that bottom lane, we did have a lot of damage coming down on Yuki, who was for uh, facing off against Mimer. So Mimer doing work and uh, forcing Yuki away right there. So actually now a fight kicking off around Wolfcamp. Intervention being used on Arax. Arax being forced away very, very quickly. Black Shield will not save him from White Knight. And he will be picking up the kill. They are not done quite yet. Culling comes out. Zilks is certainly dropping here. Now Kuja is the next tar target. Emo Plague will pop in a second. Is that going to be enough? No, it is not. And Yuki right now, once again, another target being found here. A Sultan Battery comes down on towards him. White Knight will be trying to chase him down here as he will be able to pick up the kill. Amin switching his focus towards Kuja. Kuja will probably be the only remaining member of that uh, STO team, along with Gob, who is actually right now, after finishing off White Knight, looking to chase down Amin here. Great grasping roots coming out of Mixture will deter him from doing so. Indeed, and now we actually have the tower pushing coming down. Gob gonna try and get this done. Mixer though, he's a little bit tankier than I think Gob is ready for, and they're gonna lose that tower. They're going to, I think at this rate, uh, I think it's fair to say lose the game and we are at this point getting to a point where we have to start thinking about the next game because this game clearly has not gone the way that was planned by STO. They simply weren't able to contend with the lane dominance of their opponents and I really actually have to question their decision to not go for a two-on-one swap up. They could potentially have put Vlad in that two-on-one situation where he's relatively weak early on and abused their really, really strong lane presence early with Kale and Elise with that super strong early ganking potential to, well, dive him basically super early on. Because if you can get Vlad down in a two-on-one lane, he starts to really, really suffer. As it was, though, they just left Mima to one-on-one -on -one in the top lane and let Lucian and Zyra really beast around Caitlyn in the bottom lane. So... It was essentially a game where I feel like STO could have made a single decision early on 
and really, really turned around their fate because they do have a very strong late game comp. And we've seen that they are very, very capable of running rotations and things earlier on in this tournament. But at the moment, they're just so far behind from the simple laning phase that they are almost beyond hope. All right, so Amen might have been finding Arax there. Arax does get out in the end. Meanwhile, that top lane, Gob going very, very low. He has used the Dominus, so White Knight might be looking to finish this one off, but we will be keeping our eyes on that bottom lane because, of course, it looks like there's some action going to erupt there shortly. Um, well, nothing really happening just yet as Az has got the culling available, so he might just use that one to poke down his enemy's team just uh, very, very shortly. Amen starting off the siege. Cocoon connects on towards Mixia and in goes Amin looking for the kill on towards Arax. Doesn't really manage to actually get it. Here comes the culling. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage as it misses uh, well, the entirety almost of the STO team. Mimer might find himself in trouble. Great Cocoon out of Arax. Mimer being forced to pull. Here comes Mixia with a great flash for himself. Ace in the hole comes out and that will be negated with the Zonia's Hourglass right now. Arax being chased down by Amin. Assault on battery was used. Great Dark Shield out of Kuja for himself. Amin being chased once again. Cocoon will not connect this time around. And Arawax is going to bite the dust as Miksha turned it around with once again a beautiful grasping root. There just isn't very much that can be done at this stage. That was a really advantageous engage there with Mima being caught out right at the start. But because of the way Vlad works at this stage, where he's got double invulnerability essentially, and indeed double escape skills, not that he actually chose to use his summoners here. He's so difficult to deal with. The gob in the top lane is being deathmark. Deathmark coming down on him. That will do a whole lot of damage. White Knight being stunned under the turret. He does decide against actually following up on that one as Gob did use his Dominus and of course they were fighting in that turret uh, under that turret of Gob's in the end so he didn't really want to deal with that because even though White Knight does put down a whole lot of damage he will go down uh, fairly quickly as well because he isn't too tanky. I've got to say there is sort of a historical precedent for the pro, uh, for this game. Uh, STO in the LCS promotional qualifiers uh, way back when, like a month ago now, um, played against Super Hot Crew, and obviously three members of uh, Super Hot Crew are shared with the current Oinkers Never Sleep. Although I am actually going to hold that thought because Yuki now is potentially in trouble. Arden Blaze does miss though, so he's going to be okay. But historical precedent essentially for this game, Super Hot Crew was able to pretty handily beat our STO in that format as well. And actually came out, I believe, with a 3-1 uh, scoreline in that uh, particular tournament. Or possibly a 3-2, I can't remember. Regardless, though, Super Hot Crew have beaten STO in the past. And as some people in chat are highlighting, there a lot of the weaknesses that Super Hot Crew actually showed in the game against SK aren't really going to be very important at this stage. Because they are under nearly as much pressure, and it seemed like they were choking when they went up against SK in the LCS promotionals. The top lane, once again, we did have White Knight using that death mark to maybe force Gob away. Gob looking to be reinforced by Arax and Kuja here, but in the end, of course, White Knight is a little bit too slippery to actually deal with. So, uh, here we have it. We do have Oinkers Never Sleep looking to pressure that uh, middle turret, but hold that thought for a second as Gob did go very, very low. Arax trying to turn this one around and towards White Knight. He is doing so much damage for himself, though. Can he make it happen? One versus two? No, he cannot. And Arawax will be taking down White Knight. So a good uh, turn around there for Arawax. But we might still have ONS looking to uh, pick up Arawax here. Yeah, Mima ghosting under the tower. And he's going to try for the long-term sprint here. But Arawax is Elise. And Elise gets bonus movement speed when in spider form. However, stopping to try and recall here is an incredibly risky oh. move. It does look like Arawax isn't going to check that brush though. So he's going to get away with it. Uh, kind of a, an unexpected move because it was so expected there, but he gets away with it, gets out. There's one kill in the bank, but still a huge goal difference. However, the rate of tower falling has slowed significantly, and if they can hold on for long enough, they could start to get back into this, maybe if they get a good engage as well. The split pushing is always going to be a problem, though. Zed and Vlad can do it very effectively. Yeah, they certainly can. So, Vlad, as you said, was looking to uh, do a little bit of split pushing checks on those brushes with the Tides of Blood to see whether anyone is in there. And, well, take a look. We do have, of course, 
ONS starting to clear out those wards near that barren area to tell the enemy team, hey, we're here. You might just want to try and check this out because, uh, well, if you don't, we are just going to take down that baron. And for now, well, Ral is uh, clearing out that middle lane. He might find himself in trouble because there's three members of SCO right there. But then again, Mixer and Amin are there to uh, help him out if he needs it. And, uh, well, White Knight still split pushing in the bottom lane. Yeah, he, it's just what we've seen from Zed ever since he started really being played a lot. Actually, though, Kuta could be in trouble here. Gonna have to flash out. We'll be able to do it. Morales is gonna follow that up, but he can't. Maybe he'll get the kill. Nah, barely misses him in the end with the calling, and Kuja will survive with 150 HP, but that does force him to back away, of course. Aralis right now looking to pressure that top lane with Miksha. Stranglethorns come out, but that isn't going to hit anyone just yet. But here is Mimer and Amin from the backside. Gulp taking a whole lot of damage. Mimer taking a whole lot of damage for himself. Uh, Assault and Battery comes down on towards Gulp. He will slice and dive right out of there. Mimer being forced to flash, but that really isn't enough to escape from the Elise, or is it because he just gets bursted instantly as White Knight shows himself to the party. And that even Mr. Rallis basically and Mixer were barely in that fight. They were diving under the team under with the rest of the team, but they actually spent most of the time chasing after Yuki, who actually pulled quite a nice little flash juke, but did eventually get uh, pulled down by that team. So that is basically like a three on four that happened behind the tower and they still came out well on top so getting this baron buff getting now up to what 15k gold advantage this is getting to the point i feel where uh, sto have very little choice but to really start thinking about how they're going to change up what they did this game for the next game because remember guys this is a best of five format we have at least two more games after this so sto definitely have a chance and just because one game goes very very against you history has shown us that does not necessarily dictate how the future games are going to go no it certainly does not as a train will be coming up in another 30 seconds Amin and his team are looking to rotate over to the general area already, just right after taking down that red buff. And, uh, well, we do have, of course, Mimer and Mixer in that middle lane, trying to uh, push that one out to put some more pressure down on towards STO. And uh, once again, White Knight split pushing in the bottom lane. And I'm, I'm not too sure, actually, STO do know how to deal with White Knight split pushing here, because... He, every time they send someone towards him, he's just going to blow them up. Yeah, that's the difficulty. And normally when you're running Kale, you can at least send Kale and she can actually 1v1 Zed. But she's not actually far enough ahead to be able to burst him down if he goes in on her. And now Zix is actually going to try and turn this around on Mr. Rallis. Yeah, but here is Amin to help Rallis out. Is that going to be enough though? Bolt Breaker comes out. Great flash out of Amin or out of Zilks rather. Will be Ooh. almost taking down Rallis. But Morales' burst has proven to be a little bit too much for Zilks to actually handle. So in that middle lane, Mimer, one versus three. Gob goes in. He has got the dominance available to maybe uh, make something happen on towards Mimer. But Mimer, of course, is a way, way too slippery to actually catch. And this is what happens if you get a Vlad that's too far ahead. He was very happy to put himself in a potential three-on-one situation there. That's just, I mean, that shows his bravery in walking up to the tower and poking it down because he knows he can get that done. What? Kuja almost instantly getting blown up right now. They are turning their attention to Gob. Gob under the turret gets exploded. They are looking to follow that one up towards Aerox as he does reach the safety of his turret. That is the GG's being called actually by SDO here. So the Stranglethorns come out. That is a surrender vote for SDO in the very first game. Going over to NS. Not too surprising result after how the laning phase went. And honestly, we'll, we, there's going to have to be adjustments here. They can't allow the...